What's up everyone, Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm the Crocknack and I am here to do the Metal Tag 2022. This is a 20 question questionnaire that Rock Scout came up with. There will be a link to his channel down below. I haven't had a chance to watch everyone's responses. I've only watched The Dark Paths and his was definitely pretty entertaining. Also link down to his channel too. Why the fuck not? He's got a great channel. And, uh, well, man, he comes up with some tough questions once again, but I always look forward to doing this. Like, we did it last year, and it was a buttload of fucking fun, and I like the challenge of some of these questions. And once again, we have a batch of questions that were pretty tough to answer, but, um, I had a lot of fun going through them, so let's just get started on this one. Question number one, your favorite reissue of 2021. I bought a lot of reissues in 2021. About a lot of music in 2021, let's be honest. But if I had to narrow it down to one that came out this year that I absolutely love, it would be uh, Cancer's Death Cell Rise. I bought all three of Cancer's reissues of their first three albums, but I mean, this is, oh God, this one's so damn good. Plus this one has a live set as a bonus disc on here, which is absolutely awesome. Kind of stupid though, because I already have the reissue that was done by Cyclonic Empire not too long ago. and. As far as quality, it's about the same, but um, I love this album, so I bought it again, and this this is 90s death metal glory, uh, underrated gem in general. So yeah, this was uh, probably my favorite, at least the one that I could think of that just kind of came to my mind right away. Question number two, band you discovered, old or new, in 2021? There was a lot. There was a ton of bands I discovered in 2021. Everyone put out a fucking album. It was one of the busiest years in terms of reviews and just going over music. And I'm kind of hoping for the same thing for 2022. But I kind of went with a deep cut here and I went with uh, For Hist and their self-titled album. This is actually, I believe, a one-man project. And he's also a member of Blut Os Nord. And this is just throwback second wave black metal, except very focused on melody. This is just a very pretty, but still pretty heavy album. And I like the fact that the vocals are very minimal and this is almost all about atmosphere and just the instrumentation. And it's just a really solid album. It was close to making my year end list, but again, everyone put out a fucking album and there was a lot of good stuff. But yeah, I was super glad to find this one. I think I just found it just kind of dicking around on YouTube and just looking at different music videos and shit. And wow, really good stuff. So yeah. This was definitely a cool find. Number three, show an album with an outstanding vocal performance. Well, I mean, there's a lot too, but um, honestly, one of the first ones that came to my mind was Devin Townsend band, Sincestra. Devin Townsend is literally doing everything that Devin Townsend can do, which is a lot of stuff. His vocals are absolutely amazing. Crooning, singing with these just incredible operatic vocals, growling and screaming his guts out. This is quite a performance and a very strange kind of manic listen, but it kind of fits with him just, you know, kind of burying his soul pretty much in every release here lately. And I absolutely love the vocal performance in here. Like, honestly, the opening track, Let It Roll, I might get a little teary-eyed when I hear that one. It's just fucking pretty and his beautiful vocals are a giant reason why. So yeah, uh, this would be definitely my pick for incredible vocal performance. Most of his vocal performances are incredible though, but this one, I don't know, just stood out in my mind. Number four, show a gap filler. And well, for those that don't know, a gap filler is, yeah, you, you just kind of missed this one in the discography and might as well get it. And one of the ones that came to mind was Iron Maiden, No Prayer for the Dying. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's with these issues, they have the whole picture that lines up, you know, on the spines. And I mean, I'm not a huge fan of this album at all. Maybe uh, Tail Gunner, Run Silent, Run Deep is all right. Mother Rush is decent. Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter is fucking stupid. I mean, there's there's a lot of just kind of dumb tracks in here. This is definitely one of the weaker Maiden albums, but uh, I wanted it to complete the picture, and uh, you know, it's a cool picture. That's all. That's really all. Not a fan of this one, but fill the gap. 
Number five, show a cheap pickup from 2021. And you can't get much cheaper than free, so I went with this album by Suture, Carnivorous Urge to Kill. This one actually came free in a pack that I bought from Comatose Music. Pretty much you buy a certain number of albums, they throw in a freebie, and this was actually a really solid freebie. It's just sort of brutal death metal, not pig vocals, just solid low vocals, very tight drum work. You know, it's just solid death metal. And for free, this is excellent. I got uh, my money's worth, I guess. I mean, I bought a lot of cool shit too, so. But yeah, free is um, literally the best price in terms of, you know, getting something on the cheap. And this is a fucking sweet album. So yeah, good one. Number six, your favorite artwork from a new release. Wow, man, there was a lot of good artwork too. Um, throughout 2021, I mean, one that really just got me was Asphyx, Necrosaurus. I fucking love this album cover, the dark green skulls and all the just horror related everything on there. I think it's just an awesome piece of art. It's just pretty much everything death metal artwork should be. I think it's really well done. It captures the mood and Again, it's just fucking sick, the intense detail on it. I mean, you'll be able to see a much better picture up here in the corner because, yeah, I, I definitely want to show this off. It's fucking awesome. But yeah, great fucking artwork. Number seven, a favorite track from 2021. And in terms of one that was almost always stuck in my head, it was Carcass's Dance of Ixtab, Psycho Pomp, and Circumstance, March number one in B. That is in the parentheses. Something about that opening riff is always lodged in my brain. It's very anthemic. You can almost kind of like, you know, feel the whole clap your hands together live sort of vibe. Hopefully they can play this one live when we see them at MDF. I love the fact that they kind of brought back a little bit of the death and roll sound, but in a really cool way. But yeah, this song has an instant hook, that cool drum build up, that fucking riff is so good. Ugh, I listened to this frequently and honestly it's one of the tracks I just can't wait to get to. Luckily it's the second track so I don't have to wait that long. Great song. Love it. One of my favorites of 2021. Number eight, a song that became an earworm. I mean that's almost applicable to Dance of Ixtab too. And well he didn't specify a year so I had to think of something that was instantly infectious and would occasionally just get stuck in my head. And, well, that's a lot of shit, but one I could go back to my childhood on, and it's still in my head, would be off of the heavy metal soundtrack, and that would be Cheap Tricks Reach Out. Honestly, it's one of my favorite Cheap Tricks songs. It's always stuck in my head. The opening synths, the main riff, it's just a fun song. Xander killing it on vocals. It's always stuck in my head. It's in my head right now, and honestly, I don't mind. You know what? I don't want it to leave. I love it. Let that earworm burrow into my fucking skull and live there forever. But yeah, uh, if you've never heard that song, it's a great song and hopefully it gets stuck in your head too. Number nine, two albums that are destined to be culled from your collection. Oh man, all right. I'm pretty much like a CD pack rat because there's still a bunch of shit that I have not got rid of. There's still Creed and Nickelback and uh, I don't know, just a bunch of bullshit rock. There's even Five Finger Death Punch. I did buy two albums, and then people gave me Five Finger Death Punch albums, like, for holidays. I don't know why. But, there's a lot in there, but I haven't called anything yet, because I bought them, I want to own my mistakes. It's kind of like a timeline of, like, yeah, I was into this at this one point, and then... I got out of it and then I got back into this and I don't know, I, they, they kind of just are important in terms of just like, yeah, I'm beyond that and I want to keep that just to remember, like, yeah, you didn't always listen to like really cool stuff, but I mean, cool subjective, but yeah, I'm, I'm not calling anything. I mean, if I do, it'll be probably a ton of butt rock, but yeah, it's, it's going to stay. It's just going to stay and take up space. Number 10, a band that you've gone off. I mean, there's a lot of bands that I just don't follow anymore. Um, I had to think of one off the top of my head that I used to be a big fan of, and now I'm just not. And I'm going to go with Korn. Korn, I was a huge fan of. Those first 
four albums I really fucking loved, and then after that, it's a pretty spotty history. We did review the last one. I thought it was okay. We'll probably review the new one. I mean, I would like it to be great. I would like to recapture some of that, but honestly, I don't anticipate that. But, you know, I had to think of a band that I used to be a fan of, at least. And I was definitely a Korn fan. I'm just not much of one now. So, yeah, that's uh, the answer to number 10. Number 11, a 90s album recommendation. There's a lot of 90s stuff I could have recommended, but I wanted to go with something that was a little uh, maybe obscure uh, and kind of different. So I went with... Galactic Cowboys, Space in Your Face, just because it's kind of a unique album. It's kind of a unique band. There's a lot of groove metal and thrash metal, but also alternative and kind of like, you know, just flat out rock to them. But they wrote such catchy songs. You Make Me Smile is honestly one of my favorite songs, you know, from the 90s growing up. I picked this up in a used bin in a CD store back in probably 95, 96, and I still come back to it. They're just kind of a quirky band. They really didn't fit in anywhere, and I guess they were kind of hard to market, like the alternative kids thought they were too metal, and then the metal kids thought they were too alternative, and, well, Radio Rock really didn't know what to do with them either, so, I don't know, they kind of got like a rough history. I do believe they got back together not too long ago and wrote an album, but I really enjoy this one. It is kind of a weird transitional 90s thing because it still has a little bit of the early 90s metal and then the you know mid to late 90s sort of alternative stuff so yeah interesting 90s selection here for you number 12 show a seven inch single or name a single that sold an album to you well since i don't collect vinyl you guys aren't going to see my seven inches, but I can definitely tell you a single that sold me on a band and pretty much from the second I heard it. And that would be Bast and their album Dance Macabre, and it was the song Cross Whore. Holy shit, that sounded like Ackerfeld's era bloodbath, and I fucking love that shit. I heard the filthy HM2 tone, those gloriously over-the-top death metal vocals. Everything about that song screamed, I want everything else that's coming out in this album. And I think I pre-ordered it on Amazon as soon as I heard that song. This was an import too, so I paid extra for it, but it was worth every fucking penny. I jammed the shit out of it. And honestly, they pretty much sell me on all their singles. I think I heard Gula on the next one. And I was like, well, I'm fucking getting that. And then uh, I heard all the singles they put out for Necro Sapiens. And yeah, both the last two albums were on year-end lists. And honestly, if I had listened to this one before I made my 2018 list, it would have been on there too. Yeah, excellent single. <laughs> Quite possibly the best lead-off one they could, and it's the opening fucking track. So, bam, right away. Awesome album, awesome single, completely sold me. Number 13, name an epic song of eight minutes or more. That's a lot. There's a lot. And they weren't all written by Dream Theater. But I had to kind of toy around with the idea of epic in terms of like what I think is epic. And well, in terms of songwriting, BT Bam's Ants of the Sky, I think is one of the most epic songs ever written. I know there's people who probably would say White Walls on here is, you know, probably the big epic on here. And it is fucking epic. But Ants of the Sky literally does so much genre hopping so damn well. You have thrash metal, death metal, hardcore groove metal. There's big Pink Floydy soundscapes. The song is absolutely amazing. It's 13 minutes and what do we got here? 10 seconds? All of it is fucking glorious. I absolutely adore that song, but I adore this album. This is my favorite BT Bam album still. Colors 2 was good. It's not as good as the original, but yeah, epic fucking song. Definitely check it out if you haven't. Number 14, a quick opinion on Record Store Day. Okay, me being a CD collector, that day really doesn't have much meaning to me personally. And when it comes down to the record store owners that I know around here, it's kind of a mixed bag. Like some of them enjoy the extra business, but you know, they don't like the hassle of having to order giant bundles just for Record Store Day and then, you know, uh, having to sell those. And there's like, I guess, rules to selling them. Like I know. One dude that tried selling something online from Record Store Day and they gave him a shit fit about it. But at the same time, it gets people in record stores, it gets them buying physical media. 
Granted, it's vinyl. I don't collect vinyl, but I just want to see people buy physical media because, uh, well, I want people to be as obsessed as me. Well, all right, maybe not as obsessed as me, but you know, uh, get that itch to collect again. You know, it's it's fun going in record stores. I still do it, obviously. But for me, it's a mixed bag. I generally don't go out on record store day just because, again, they're not carrying CDs, but it's really cool to see people lined up out the door to just get a whole bunch of cool records. So yeah, kind of a mixed opinion, but I mean, overall, I think mostly positive. Number 15, what part of your music setup would you change? I've been toying the idea of getting like a really nice stereo again. Like most of my listening is on my computer, but I have like a nice Logitech system with, you know, a nice subwoofer and it's a really solid, you know, speaker set. But jamming stuff on a really nice high quality stereo with really awesome speakers, I think would be a cool step up. It's just, you know, getting all the components, setting it all up and finding a place for it. And I spend most of my time down here jamming music on my computer. This would be kind of like more of a social setting thing. So having it, you know, amongst where guests would congregate would make more sense. But I don't know, that, that's something I've toyed with. I haven't pulled the trigger on anything yet, but uh, that's something I could potentially change, I think. Number 16, biggest musical disappointment of 2021. Honestly, 2021 was loaded with a lot of great albums. Got to see live shows again. Granted, you know, COVID's still fucking shit up, but it was nice to actually get back to seeing shows again. I got to see people I hadn't seen in a while. So 2021 was good and bad, but I kind of had to go with the release. And in terms of the amount of prestige this band has as a giant legacy act, I had to go with uh, Iron Maiden Senzutsu. I'm still not a huge fan of this. I don't necessarily think it's a bad album, but it is a weak album. And for all the years that went by, this really was pretty lackluster on a production standpoint, on some songwriting standpoint, like all the melodic uh, beginnings, like everything had to have an acoustic setup and an acoustic outro, and then these long winded bridges. They're not a prog band. They're a heavy metal band. I, I want to see them embrace that more. There were still some songs that embody the old school maiden spirit, but it's it's kind of waning, I think. And honestly, the shittiest part is I don't want to feel like I have to lower my expectations for Iron Maiden. It just doesn't seem right, but I think I'm going to have to, considering the quality of, well, the last three haven't been great. But you know, it's all subjective. I know plenty of people that love this. I know Shred loves this one, but this one was a disappointment for me because I still hold this band in high esteem. So yeah, I guess this is probably my most disappointing album or musical thing for 2021. Number 17, name an album you're expecting and looking forward to in 2022. Well, there's a fuck ton, but if I had to narrow it down, Immolation, Megadeth, that little teaser that Dave Mustaine released sounded fucking tasty. Voivod, because Voivod rules and the two singles they've put out have been incredible. Dying Fetus, they're in the studio, so that shit's happening. Call to Luna, very much looking forward to their new one. That single they released with that fucking trippy ass video is fucking awesome. Two Mold, I believe they're supposed to be releasing something this year, which, you know, it's weird because they were releasing an album a year there for a while, and then they took this nice long break, and actually it was during a time where I figured they would throw out an album, but apparently they are working on something that is at least the rumors I've heard, so very excited about that. And Anthrax. I am looking forward to a new Anthrax album. Four All Kings was fucking awesome, so I want to see them keep rolling with that shit. So, yeah, those would be... At least if I was narrowing them down to like big ones I'm looking forward to, those would probably be it. Number 18, who would you like to see release a solo album? And honestly, Dark Path, I totally fucking agree with you with Dave Grohl and Probot. I would love to see him bring back Probot. I mean, technically Probot is Dave Grohl. He did write all the music, but you know, get a different crew of guest stars because this album is so fucking fun and underrated. There's so many cool riffs in here, like different styles and the different vocalists they had on there, it was just a fucking fun listen. I especially love Centuries of Sin. That opening track is just whoop ass. So yeah, Dave Grohl, if you got a little bit of metal left in you, I know you still toy with it, it's still there. 
Another Probot album. Oh my god, this would be awesome. Number 19. Show a placeholder album you would rebuy in better condition. And, well, I mean, placeholder albums generally have runs like, yeah, it's just there to, you know, just kind of fill the void. But, Testament's Demonic, I know they reissued this, and I think it's a remaster. I might actually pick that up because I wouldn't mind hearing this mixed a bit better because it's not the best mix. It's definitely my least favorite Testament album, but I still think it's pretty good. The reissue might have maybe a little bit more value to me and just in terms of the music. I might actually listen to it more. I don't know. Again, not my favorite Testament album, but I would upgrade. I'm willing to upgrade on this one. And then finally, number 20. Because of cost or availability, what album have you not bought yet? Well, there's a lot, and I really had to narrow it down as to ones I've definitely been after for a while, but they either haven't reissued them or, you know, it's just a litany of fucking Russian bootlegs. I'm not fucking getting one of those. And I went with Centric's debut, Shattered Existence. I have For Whose Advantage. I fucking love that album. That is their second album, and it's actually an OG copy on Road Racer Records. I would love to be able to find the debut uh, an original copy, but man, even the fucking reissues are going for like 50 bucks on Discogs. So that one, I'm just gonna have to be patient, buy my time, see if I can find it. But uh, I'm still in the hunt. I'm not giving up on that one because I know it's good. I've jammed it on YouTube, but I want a physical copy because I'm me. So yeah, that is the Metal Tag Questionnaire for 2022. And for any of those who have not done this yet, I recommend doing it because this was fun. These are challenging questions, but they're fun questions, and I really like how many different avenues they went down. Again, uh, Rock Scout, you did a great job in terms of your questionnaire. I look forward to this now. Like, this is one of my favorite things to do when the new year kicks over. Now, I believe the other Thralls will be doing this as well. I know that Shred has expressed interest as well as Jam and John and Miller. Possibly Ren too. I don't know. I'd like to get them all in here because, again, these are fun questions and you can get a lot of different answers here. So, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you would like to help us out there, there will be a link down below. Again, we are working on getting our new batches of shirts. But by the time you watch this video, I will probably have talked to the shirt gentleman that we go through and have gotten that ball rolling. So definitely stay tuned because there will probably also be a giveaway in there. And that is because you guys fucking rule and we are almost at 10,000 subscribers and I still in disbelief, but I love it. It's absolutely awesome. Thank you guys so much for getting us to this point. We're gonna keep cranking out videos and keep overloading YouTube with just nonsensical metal shit left and right. Because that's what we do, I think. And we've got some different content we're working on here soon, so it won't just be collection updates and album reviews and rankings, which maybe you guys seem to like those anyway, but we have some other stuff coming up. So with all that, I thank you all once again because you all fucking rule and we will catch you later.